In this video, we are going to talk about the 2020 housing market in Massachusetts. And I'm going to give you some other details and breakdowns of statistics so you can really fully understand what is happening here and decide if it is a good idea to buy a house now or if you have bought and you're thinking of moving, either trading up or moving out of state, you can really see where exactly you are financially. Let's get started. So what happened this last year? Well, I think everyone in the media and just about everyone was talking about the situation with the global pandemic. Life and business as we know it here changed for a lot of people and the housing industry was no different. Today, I wanna to dive in deep into some statistics and this video is going to be a little longer because I want to give you the last quarter of Essex County as I always do. And you can see here in the cards above, I have the three quarters that have already been compared. Then I want to show you a recap of the entire state of Massachusetts. Now Massachusetts is pretty varied, so in addition to that, I'll break out the North Shore and the area called the Greater Boston Suburbs, which is pretty much Middlesex County. In Essex County, the fourth quarter ending December 31st, median sales prices were up to 541000 this price was down 19000 from the third quarter. And if you look at the three quarters and compare them, the first quarter, the median price was 490 The second quarter price was 518 and the third quarter was 560 which, as I just said, was the highest. And this makes sense because if you pause for just a minute, traditionally more people shop when it's warmer outside, especially here in New England. Asking price versus the sold price in the fourth quarter was 102%, basically over asking. Comparing the three quarters, the first quarter was 97.3% of asking, the second quarter was 99.5% of asking, and the third quarter was 100.9%. The average days on market was 31 days in the fourth quarter, which is the lowest number of days on the market for the entire year. The first quarter was 57 days on market and the second and third quarters were 37 days on market. So what is this really showing? Well, a snapshot is the buyers are paying over asking and they're making decisions quickly. So basically, if you are a buyer, you want to do all your research before you go shopping or risk making a huge mistake. If you are nervous about making a huge mistake, here on this channel, we have a ton of resources for you. And if you hit that subscribe button and the bell, you will be notified when I post a new video weekly. I love giving you this information. It's my passion. I was an urban planner for 20 years and I've been doing this business of real estate sales now for 18 years and I absolutely love it. I'm here to help you and work with you if you want to work with me. But regardless, I want to elevate this industry and provide value. So that is why I will continue to make these videos. Oh, and if you want me to talk about a certain topic, just comment below as I monitor the comments and I'll get your request. And of course, you can always call me. I'm a real person and I answer the phone. So enough about that. Back to the market. The number of closed sales in the fourth quarter was 1,849 for Essex County. It was down a little from the third quarter, which was 1,997. The third quarter was the highest number of sales and the second quarter was 1,261 and the first quarter was 979. As we alluded, this is a normal cycle in Massachusetts as January, February, March are cold and there just is not as many sales. Plus New Englanders are getting the house ready for the spring market. There's more to choose from in the spring, but as you can see from the numbers, the prices are higher when there is more competition. So that of course begs the question, should I buy now? My answer, always, always, always buy when you are ready. This is not a pair of jeans. You can't exchange them. So take your time. But when you are ready, the market has told you that you need to jump on it. While we have quoted the prices in the days on market, it's also important to talk about the inventory. A balanced housing market is when you have at least six months of inventory, meaning it would take six months for all the houses to sell and completely deplete the market. 
That is not what we have had this last year at all. The first quarter was almost two months of supply and then going down slightly to a month and a half. The third quarter was 0.859, which equates to 27 days worth of housing supply. And the fourth quarter was a half a month. Now, just to note here too, to calculate this inventory supply, you have to take the total number of solds and what is on the market. However, brokers have the option of keeping a house active and on the market until the purchase and sale is signed. Then it is considered pending. But here too, in Massachusetts, no one can force someone to purchase a home. So it's never really over until it's over. Now, buyers can't walk away scot-free if it's after the purchase and sale. And I'll do another video about that in the future. Or you can just call me and I can explain. But suffice it to say, the numbers on the month supply the average price and the median price. All of these numbers can be skewed slightly. So evaluate these numbers with the big picture in mind and don't get hung up on the finite parts of the market. Now let's talk about the numbers for the whole state of Massachusetts. As a whole, the median sales price was 578,000. And I'm rounding off here if it's more than $500 or more than 50 cents. The asking price versus the sold price was 102%, so very much a bidding war in the state. The average days on market was 50 days. The total number of houses that were sold were 54,000, which was about 1,000 less than last year. I mean, can you really believe that only 1,000 less than last year? Touche on the pandemic. We humans really figure out a way to make things work for our lives. Now, much of the Massachusetts population lives either on the North Shore or in the greater Boston suburbs, the Worcester area, the Metro West, or the South Shore. The Cape and the Islands have their own MLS, and they're really not part of these statistics. Although, from my colleagues, I know the Cape has been booming with people ab being able to work from home due to the pandemic. Let's move on to two popular counties, Essex and Middlesex. I just was quoting you the quarter to quarter for Essex County, but let's compare that to all of 2019. For Essex County, the median sales price was up 70,000 from 2019. The asking price versus the sold price was 101%. Closed sales were 6,100, which was down 4% for the year. For Middlesex County, the median sales price for 2020 was up to 624,000, up 72,000 from 2019. Asking price versus sold was 101%. The closed sales were 11,000, which was down, but not by much, only by 0.19% for the entire year. So we have witnessed prices have jumped by 70,000 in both of these counties. Now, not every county is like this, and if you want additional information, just contact me and I can get you those numbers. So I'd like to shift gears just a little bit and show you some really interesting statistics over the last 20 years. Now, I'm capping the last 20 years because the MLS that I belong to does not have reliable information prior to that. So we're going to start with 1995. One of the questions I always get is buying a house a good investment for me. So watch till the end because I think you will be fascinated from what I uncover. So switching to the computer, I want to show you the statistics. And really, price appreciation is the most significant here. Here, let's start off with 1995. Look at the average sold price. So for our purposes, let's just call it 168000 Now, where were you in 1995? Now let's march through these years. As you can see, as we move through the years, the average price of a home keeps increasing. And it continues to do so. And it continues and it continues to do so. Now, boom, 
What happened in 2008? Do you remember? One of the financial crises in our country. Yes, we have had others. And what you see is a decline in the average price all the way until 2011, where then the housing market starts to recover to a price point that is higher than in 2005. Because in 2005, it was a peak. So all those people that had bought their house and lost value either had to sell at a loss or they had to wait it out. And since then, the prices have continued to escalate and it continues to do so. And it continues Now at the end of 2020, the average price as you see here is $577,831.08, $578,000. Why did this happen? Well, you can't just look at the prices for two reasons. One, inflation, and two, interest rates. During the price appreciation, you will hear people say, houses always go up in value. But as I just showed you, that's not always true. And when interest rates are low, the common phrase is money is so cheap and they bid the houses up because the mortgage payments are less because you're paying less interest. And in this environment, instead of giving it to the bank in terms of high interest, what people really do is the buyers give it to the seller. Now, one perspective is if you're going to pay a lot of money for a house, you give a lot to the seller rather than the bank. And a lot of people like this perspective because it makes you feel better about spending a lot of money. That's a nice way of thinking about it, right? Well, not exactly because when the rates are higher, the prices are typically lower. So it sort of is a little bit of a wash. But now what about this idea of inflation? These statistics that I'm showing you do not adjust for inflation. They're just going from 168,000 in 1995 to 578,000 in 2002. That is a price increase of 243%. But I need to adjust this price for inflation. What was the inflation from 1995 to 2020? Well, it was 74%, which I just Googled this and I found a calculator to calculate it out. And you can do this too. So now I have to subtract that price from the price appreciation because everything costs more now, right? So when I sell, I receive the 578,000. However, this whole time I've been paying interest to the bank. So it must account for that. Now I recognize that the interest that you have been paying is deducted against your income, but let's just try to keep this simple. If you want me to run those numbers, and that value, you can comment below. Also, because my data doesn't go all the way back for 30 years, and I'm acknowledging that this is a little bit of a problem here because I ran the numbers in terms of a 30 year mortgage and the interest that I'd be paying on 30 years. But remember, as I said before, we're talking about the big picture here. So I've got this purchase price, I've got my selling price, and I've got the inflation. And now when you subtract all those numbers, you can see the true profit of purchasing the house is 133,000. Now just a few final caveats. Typically houses have to be maintained and decorating styles change over time too, especially with the booming HGTV channel. You know you can spend a lot of money on decorating. So here's a secret. If you really want to try to make even more profit, one way to do it is to pay less interest. I share this with all my clients and in my home buyer class that you can sign up for on my website, I also share all of these tools. And it's not some snake oil thing either. The banks offer it as well, but they charge you a fee. I won't charge you a fee. When the banks figured out that a lot of homeowners started to ask questions about how much interest that they were paying, they came up with a new product. And yes, I'm happy to share, you, share with you how to maximize your profit. I hope I have provided value to you. And if you are a buyer, I would love to help you. You can call, text, email me. And if you are a seller, I have a six step program to help you get top dollar in this market if this is the right time for you. As always here at Hobble Real Estate, we buy and sell every home as it is our own. 
make it a great day.